are going to um, 617, 617, what's your name, where you calling from, what's on your mind? Hi, uh, this is Mike from Brooklyn, how's everything? Pretty good, how about you? Oh, it's good, it's good. Uh, this is a, a wonderful uh, topic. I, I was, like, astonished at all the uh, hypocrisy of Joe Biden. But um, one thing I, I don't like is the focus on prison reform as if we're all prisoners. I mean, there are about, like, what, 2 million prisoners in the United States? And there are about 40 million black people, maybe 36 million ADOS. So that means oh, and, and half of the prisoners are black men so that means only one million black prisoners but i think so that he, means like 2.5 but i think he, but i think but i think prisoners, right? but i think he did that because of that's his fault like i think he did that because that was the criticism and that was his fault like he was the architect of it i think that's why he focused on it because of because of what he did and who he is in the, in 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 the creation um, not the creation, but but the the putting putting mass incarceration on roller skates. The architect of this this incarceration state. I think that's why he did it. Not because we're all prisoners, but I think that's why he did it. Even though there's a, even though when you look at these numbers, like it's 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 disproportionate as a mug. But I think that's why he did it. No, definitely, I I understand that. But ninety seven point five percent of black people wouldn't benefit from prison reform. You know, it's only mm -hmm. like one million out of the. The 36 to 40 million black people, you know, are involved. The problem is, like, I think, I don't think we, as we're having this conversation, I don't think we can undercut the role. I understand, just because we're not all in jail or imprisoned or, or we're not all men who are in jail, I don't think we can undercut the role. You know, black men are the most incarcerated in the world after slavery. More black men incarcerated than all women. You know, that makes black men like walking prisoners and i don't think we can underestimate that and underestimate the impact of that just because you know well everybody's not in jail women aren't in jail and all black men aren't in jail no you 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 use incarceration to basically handicap and destroy a community it doesn't have to understand something it doesn't have to be everybody to destroy you like it doesn't have to be everybody in your group like that, understand, like when you say more black men incarcerated than all women, that means that black men were targeted in a way that no other group was targeted. And that's an enormous, you know, that, there's no, there's no overcoming that as a group. There's no individual agency that overcomes No, you're that. right. Yeah. So it's like, it is predatory. The whole scheme is predatory and your family does serve time with you. But I, I, I still think they need a more comprehensive plan to get ADOS on board. Because, you know, just a prison reform, that doesn't do anything for me because I'm not a prisoner. I'm not a criminal. You know? All right, fam. So, I appreciate, I appreciate you calling me. I appreciate it. But, like, I think we have to think collectively. We can't think of it as, well, I'm not in jail. Shoot. Well, um, 310, 310, I'm coming to you. What's up? What up? What's going what on? Up? Just talk, talk. I wasn't even going to call in until the last call. <laughs> you know, it's a trip because, you know, as an attorney, you know, but at the same time, I didn't come from, like, striver boomers. Some of the logic that I hear out of other people that are educated, it just doesn't, I don't even know what they be talking about, I'm going to be honest. And I'm saying this because it, it just kind of needs, the, the key thing that he said was that he was a financial advisor. So I'm a financial advisor, so I'm going to think about this thing in numbers. Well, one plus one is two, and two plus two is four, and four plus four is eight. But this is the problem. When I give you the most important number, you don't want to listen. The most important number, the most important number is 700,000. So you got 700,000 black males that descend from slavery, counted babies, and counted old people. There's only 20 million of us incarcerated. You got 4 billion women on the planet and 700,000 are incarcerated. And you don't understand why that's the most important issue possibly on the table as far as like our presentation structure, everything else today. I don't know, like sometimes it's interesting because you went to Howard event mm -hmm. and I went to UCLA and like we sacrificed so much to do these shows. And sometimes I hear other people and they basically are underhandedly saying they don't want to do that. They want to know, the Elizabeth Warren thing helps me out. Of, I mean, particularly the, the uh, Bernie Sanders version of it. Forgive all my student debt. Because the little, you know, the donations, I appreciate them, but forgive us. But at the end of the day, that's not reparation. And so I'm not saying this to be 
ultra critical of callers where they don't call in. I want you to feel comfortable. But at the same time, sometimes it's hard for me to connect with the, with the self-identity, me-oriented way that other people are approaching it. And I think that's part of the reason we never had a reparation discussion. I think that's part of the reason that we never had black politics in the way that we've had it in the last you know, year, particularly in the last six to nine months, is because a lot of people got to realize, like, maybe you're not getting enough out of these shows because you aren't really understanding how little you really care about other black folks. Because what I heard was, what I heard is there's 40 million blacks, and um, because only a million are incarcerated, um, well, then at the end of the day, what that means is, is that maybe we shouldn't be focused on those people because those people are only a small minority. But in reality, no, we're talking about <laughs> incarcerated people so that you can create a new system of slavery. This is, the, this is not 101, this is 103. And I'm just saying this because I, I really felt like that was, and I'm, I don't feel like it was a disrespectful call, but I felt it was the call of a financial advisor. And maybe you not need to come home and this is for all of us. Maybe whatever you do, leave that at the door and come in the room and don't be a financial advisor. Or don't be a, a prison warden. Or don't be a psychologist. Or don't be a basketball player. Be an ADOS black person that cares about somebody outside of your house just as much as you care about somebody inside your house that's ADOS and going through this. Because that's what me and the vets do every day. I just want to say that. 